Mark chapter 11 starts with a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Now as they approached Jerusalem near Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here soon. So they went and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street and untied it. Some people standing there said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? They replied as Jesus had told them, and the bystanders let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Both those who went ahead and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus predicts finding this cult who had never been ridden on and therefore was not broken in. They were challenged by bystanders who let them go once they told what it was for, again as predicted. This untamed cult then took the coats on its back and let Jesus sit on him. But I don't think the intention here is to convey a miracle about controlling the cult's behaviour. The idea is to convey the cult's unadulterated purity. What follows from verse 11 is what I call a Markian Big Mac. The restaurant franchise McDonald's have a popular hamburger product which they call a Big Mac, which has five layers. What happens here is that Jesus goes to the temple, then he curses a fig tree, then he goes back to the temple and hands the money changers theirs, then he goes back and sees the withered fig tree, and then he's back in the temple again. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. And after looking around at everything, he went out to Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late. That may be a bit of a letdown after the triumphal entry, but bear with Mark. Verse 12. Now the next day, as they went out from Bethany, he was hungry. After noticing in the distance a fig tree with leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem. Jesus entered the temple area and began to drive out those who were selling and buying in the temple courts. He turned over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. Then he began to teach them and said, Is it not written? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of robbers. The chief priests and experts in the law heard it, and they considered how they could assassinate him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed by his teachings. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Jesus said to them, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth, if someone says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. For this reason I tell you, whatever you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, If you have anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your sins. They came again to Jerusalem. While Jesus was walking in the temple courts, the chief priests and experts in the law and elders came to him and said, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do these things? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or from people? Answer me. They discussed with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say from people, they feared the crowd, for they all considered John to be a true prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. And that's the end of the chapter. Looking at the first of the temple story, one day he does a reconnoiter. He cleanses the temples and says, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've turned it into a den of robbers. Then the chief priests and experts in the law plot to have him killed. 
In the evening, Jesus and the disciples head out, but they're back the next day when the priests and experts in the law ask him on what authority he does these things. Jesus asks them this question to which either answer they give loses. Was John the Baptist from heaven or from people? It does appear from this that John the Baptist must have been very popular with some people, but not with the temple cult. Because even if this is just a plot device and Jesus never existed, Mark was presumably basing it on what he thought would be probable motivations. They answer they don't know, so Jesus uses this as a reason to neither tell them by what authority he's acting. So the bread of the Big Mac is, firstly, Jesus goes to the temple for reconnaissance. Secondly, the next day he cleanses it and the priests plot to kill him. And the day after that, he's back and confounds them with this tricky question. The meat in the Big Mac story is this fig tree. Jesus sees it from a distance and notes that it has leaves. He goes to see if there is fruit on it. There is not, so he curses it, saying, May no one ever eat from you again. The next day they saw the fig tree in the morning, withered from the roots. Peter points it out, and Jesus in essence says, If you've got enough faith, you can get whatever you pray for. But, when you stand praying, if you have anything against someone, you've got to forgive them first, so that your Father will forgive your sins. If it's correct that with these Markian snacks the outer story informs the inner, then there are some parallels here. Jesus does a reconnoitre in the temple. He sees the fig tree from far away. He clears out the temple. He comes close to the fig tree, notes that there is no fruit on it because it is not the season for figs, and he curses it. Then the next day, He gives the priest this confounding question. He notes the withered fig tree and extols the virtue of faith, but requiring that you have forgiven those who've wronged you. So the fig tree gives a couple of ideas to the temple story. One is that it can look good from afar, but fail to deliver when looked at close up. And if you fail to deliver fruit for the tree or spiritual sustenance for the temple, then that role will be permanently taken from you, as it was from the fig tree. But this doesn't necessarily have to be your fault, because now is the right time to change the providers of spiritual sustenance. Then the withered fig tree gives proof of the power that Jesus has, and Jesus' explanation of the power of prayer fills in what he declines to say in answer to the question about the origin of his authority. It's a short chapter, but I'd say that Mark 11 is a very satisfying piece of literature.